Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's your girl, Lori. If I sound like I've got a cold, I do not. It is allergy season, so that's what I'm gonna sound like for a little bit of time. But I did wanna to talk to you about food today. So we're gonna talk a little bit about your relationship with food. All right, so I could hit you with all kinds of different studies. I mean, I do a lot of health coaching. I do a lot of nutritional stuff. I can hit you with so many different, like, hey, these are the studies and this needs to happen. I'm not gonna do that because I wanna give it to you from how I do in my own life, things that I've battled with in my own life, and then also let you know what kind of works for my clients and just kind of give you other tools. And if it is something that you want a longer um, like podcast on, do let me know in the comments, please, because I know a lot of you have asked about food content, like not just making food, like relationships with food. And I thought that that would be a really important start. So let me go a little bit of a backstory. And, um, one thing I will say about my OCD, it's been very, very helpful in my entire profession because my OCD is I have to understand things, not like a Google, go on Google and see what's wrong. No, no. Understand why things happen. It's probably why I love sociology and human studies and it's just part of my OCD. So this is where I lean into my di diagnoses um, and I did the same with my eating. So I have been a binge eater probably probably most of my life. So I'm 51. So I want to say probably at like eight, eight or nine. Well, and that makes sense because it, it coincided, I think, with the abuse and the molestation and stuff. So um, you have to understand and eating, we're not going to talk about eating disorders a lot here. I'm talking more about the relationship with food, but we can do an eating disorder conversation um, if you so choose, but it can be very sensitive to people. However, it is very important to not run from, right? You don't get shamed for it. And I think a lot of people, that's where they do struggle with their eating disorder is through shame. And shame is, no, we're not doing that. So I will just put on the hat of like, yep, I, I, I have struggled with a binge eating disorder most of my life. Now that's just where you would uh, eat a lot. There's no purging behind it. You just eat a lot and it's like you're eating your feelings, right? So as I was going through my own healing, one of the biggest reasons that I wanted to go into the health aspect of my coaching was to understand food. Because growing up in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, um, and it would never fly now, but Special K, you know the cereal Special K? There was a commercial and they would say, could you pinch more than an inch? Like you, they would show like your belly and say, could you pinch more than an inch, right? And then that was kind of their tagline of why you would buy their cereal. It, it, don't go hating on Special K. Like this is just, it was like the time. Everybody did that, you know, moment on the lips, lifetime on the hips. And you'd see people walking through the turnstile with like muffins on their waist. Yeah, I mean, it was a whole thing. Talk about body shaming. Yeah, that was multiple generations of that, right? And... And, and the, the box was like the special K with like the, um, like a measurement tape around it to like make it look like it was a smaller K. It was really, really not fabulous, right? But as a person who, you know, as a female who looked and, you know, oh, you have to be a size two and you have to be a size zero and this is beautiful and that is beautiful. And it, it, it's brainwashing, right? And so if you think about it, hi, so if you think about it, you have to understand that when people um, are looking at something and we look at it, we go, that's fat, that's ugly, that's bad, that's stupid. You go, well, what can I do to control it? So yeah, so here's the deal. And I will give you this. Okay, 80% of your success is not in the gym. 80% of your success is in the kitchen. And when I say success, I'm talking about healthy eating. I'm not talking about losing weight. And this is where I don't put expectations on things. Now you, and, and you don't not eat things that you like, right? Now, if you have celiac disease, if you um, are vegan, if you have sugar diabetes, if you, yes, there's going to be um, things that you should refrain from, right? Because that's just for your health, like literally for your health. But everything else is you got to stop villainizing food. You have to stop villainizing food. This is the best thing that ever happened in my binge eating disorder. And it doesn't really rear its head much. Like I, I really, um, I, I really think I have a pretty good handle on it. Every now and again, I will see I'm doing my mindless eating. And when you do mindless eating, that's kind of like sitting in front of the TV and just like constantly eating. Next thing you know, the entire bag is gone. And you're like, oh my God, how'd this happen? Because you're not paying attention to what you're eating. So that's going to be your first key. And you don't, like I said, don't villainize food. Don't be like, oh my God, I must stay away from carbs. Again, unless you have some other medical issue. But if you're just trying to lose weight, 
you got to stop attaching your worth to that number on the scale. You got to stop attaching your worth to the size of clothing. You have to be good with who you are. Now, let's say you say, well, I would like to lose weight for my health. Totally different vibe. Totally different vibe. Cool. We're still not going to cut stuff out. Like when I work with my, my regular health coaching clients, not just my life coaching clients, we don't, we don't cut things out. We add things in. See, you look at food as good and bad. French fries aren't bad, right? A cheeseburger isn't bad. It's just food. It may not be the most nutritional. You can say, okay, that's not as nutritional as I would like for it to be. Do you see the narrative? If I look and go, oh my God, I can't have that. Oh my God, that's full of carbs. It's greasy. It's fattening. Oh my God, I'll eat it and I'll get like super fat. Okay. Whoa, you just made a potato that was fried this awful thing, the trans fat. Now, okay, so we know about cholesterol. We know that that's not the best thing. This doesn't mean that you have to just like be like, I must only eat these things. That will make you hate food. It will make you binge. It could possibly develop into an eating disorder. It could be something that you carry into other generations for people. And that's what you don't want to do. So you have to understand that you're attaching, um, well, and that goes into a whole different thing, right? Because most people eat their feelings, right? It's, you don't even have to have an eating disorder. You're just eating your emotions or you're bored or, you know, whatever the case may be. That's why you got to practice mindfulness. And you're going to be like, what? Yes. Mindfulness leads into everything. This means if you're going to eat the, some French fries, take your time and eat these French fries. You might not end up eating them all. You might, it doesn't matter, but eat, don't just put them in your mouth, shove and sit there and not pay attention. Enjoy it. Put that French fry in your mouth for McDonald's and chew on it and just be like, oh my God, this tastes so good. Don't be like, oh my God, I shouldn't eat these French fries. Why? Just have the French fries. And then if you want to have a healthier, uh, more nutritious, healthier um, salad or something for lunch, you can. But see, you can't just go cutting things out and be like, okay, it's Monday. I'm going to start this big diet. I'm cutting out all my sugars. I'm cutting out all this. I'm cutting all of that. You're still, okay, all you're doing is still not dealing with your mental stuff. The relationship with food is here. It's not here. It's here. So you have to understand that when you look at something and go, I'm not beautiful because I'm not a size zero. So what? You don't have to be a size zero to be beautiful. Who said that? And again, don't misconstrue, hey, living healthy and possibly prolonging your life by dropping a few pounds and changing your nutritional value. Yes, that's great. But don't ever do it just to lose weight. Don't, don't, don't be like, oh my God, I can't have these. Are you kidding me? If I want a bag of Doritos, like I get the little snack bags. If I want them, I'm going to have them. Okay. That doesn't mean I'm going to go for an extra three mile run this afternoon. But when you develop a healthier relationship with food, you do start to minimize the amount that you eat. And if you want a piece of cake, you have a piece of cake. And you're like, oh my God, I feel so good about this because I want you to enjoy the food and what you're eating. You don't, you're not meant to just sit there and eat like celery, maybe eggs, and that's it. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's not sustainable. So I want you to try this exercise. Okay, this is a little call to action. I want you to be mindful of the, what you're eating. Not mindful of what you're eating if I don't put it in your mouth. Mindful of what you're eating to say, okay, how do I feel when I eat this? And let's say you're like, oh my God, I feel so bad. I just had a piece of cake. Now I need you to ask, why do you feel bad that you had cake? Well, I need to lose weight. Why? Because I don't like how I look. Okay. What do you not like? Well, I feel fat. Okay. Um, are you going to beat yourself up during this? Are you going to say, I hate my body right now, so I have to make it feel better? Because I promise you this, you could be this amount of weight and this amount of size and drop to whatever this fictitious number is that you have on the scale or this fictitious number in a dress size. And you could still be battling with the same thing. Trust me, I know there are times you can say, I want to lose weight, I want to lose weight, I want to lose weight. Okay, now you've reach, reached this imaginary goal that you've created. You still don't like your body. You still don't like how you look. Now, now you start complaining, oh my God, now I have all this saggy skin. Oh my God, now look at me. Oh, like you're, and now you're in a complaint cycle. Now you're in an inner brat complaint cycle. And now you're cutting out food. Now you're mad at the food. It's not the food. The food is not bad. Stop villainizing food. Yeah. I, is there studies? Like, so I'm not going to go down it. But is there studies saying that, like, yeah, peop, your body does get addicted to sugar. Quite literally, it's addicted to sugar. 
This doesn't mean that you have to just quit sugar. That's not, that's not sustainable. But you can change the level of sugars in which you put in your body. There's natural sugars, there's processed sugars. And the industry, the food industry knows how to keep people addicted to certain foods. I mean, that's just the world. I mean, right? So when you can do things in small doses and be mindful. So I want you to be mindful the next time you go, okay, I don't want to have that. Okay, that's not the best. I know a lot of you already know. Like, I mean, I love my Dr. Pepper Zero or my Diet Dr. Pepper. Of course, I know there's aspartame. Of course, I know all of these things. I do. I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh my God, I can't do that. It's bad. Really? Because if you want to start dissecting everything down that people do that's not good for them, oh my God, you won't leave the house. And even then you might have to get out of your house because you think that's not good for you. So I like that. I have it a day, once a day, maybe sometimes twice a day. Drink a lot of water in between. I have my little chocolate every day. Like these are the things that create a healthy relationship with food. And it makes it to where you don't binge and you're not doing these things. On top of, that's the first part, dealing with your stuff. You got to deal with your stuff. Stop eating your feelings. Okay. Stop avoiding it. I did it most of my life. Just, you got to stop doing it because if you look at anything in life as good and bad, you start like, whoa, like now you start judging yourself. I can't do this. I can't do that. I, can't. I mean, yeah, we have to have some kind of a moral compass that we carry, but food is not one of them. All right. So I want you to really, and I'm really interested to know if you want to go deeper into this on the podcast, but I want to know in the comments too, some things that you struggle with your food. My rule of thumb, and everybody knows this, I do not believe in diets. That's just me. Now, eating a nutritional diet with fun things that go in there, like candy or cookies or whatever, yeah, I believe in that. I don't believe in diets unless it's for health purposes, full-on health purposes. So be careful of going the whole diet route. We're not doing that. Yes, pre-plan your meals. Make it to where you have less choices. That's the whole concept behind decision fatigue, right? Like you want to minimize your decisions. But always give yourself a treat, because if not, then you're just going to feel like you're depriving yourself. And I am not the fan for deprivation. So yeah, so that's sort of just a little teeny tiny overview. We could do 57 different series on food um, and going into nutritional value and density and all of these things. Yeah, it, it's, it doesn't matter right now because you still got to deal with this. So but yeah, so that's kind of the wrap on food. Be mindful when you're eating it. Do not shame yourself, but ask yourself why you're eating. Not me. Okay, if you're hungry, you're hungry. But I mean, like, why are you eating at night? Why are you binging? Why are you doing those things? And then journal it in those five journals. That's why those five journals are extremely important. That has been key to preventing a lot of my binges. So, but yeah, that's the wrap on food.